Welcome to Messiah Lutheran in Lakeville, Minnesota. We're so glad you're here with us today. Today we're continuing on in our sermon series called Back to the Basics. And in this series, we are going through the book of Luke. And last week we asked that people read chapters 1 and 2, and uh, then we're going to be talking about... uh, part of that, or sorry, and this week we went three through five, and so this week we're going to talk about part of chapter five. Um, And we also want to encourage people to join us in Bible study on Sunday morning. Now, you can do that in two ways. Um, We're going to be looking at, this week we'll be looking at three through five in Luke, and you can do it in two ways. One, you can show up here at 9.15. We've got tables spread far apart, and we ask people to uh, bring their own coffee, to bring their own Bibles, uh, and to uh, just kind of spread out as much as possible. We're in the Family Life Center in the gym, so plenty of room and room to get out there. And we're also going to be broadcasting that same Bible study. I just put my computer right in front of me, and we're doing it on Zoom. And so you can, uh, below will be a link to where you can find out about that and how to get there. And uh, so we'll encourage you to join us on, it's about 9.15 um, on Sunday morning. So uh, the whole goal is for us to get back to the basics, to get back to Jesus and get back to his word. And so today, part of what we're doing with this back to the basics is we are looking at uh, Messiah's measures. Now, measures are ways that we as a congregation uh, ask ourselves, are we fulfilling our vision? And how do we measure that? And so we ask ourselves questions such as the one we're going to ask today, where is God leading us? And the cool thing about these measures, though, is they're not just for the congregation as a whole, but for the congregation as individuals, too. And so we're asking everybody to ask themselves the question, where is God leading me? And so that's what we're going to be talking about today as we get back to the basics. Where is God leading me? And so let us begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, a day in which we can worship you, whether we're here in the building or whether we're somewhere else throughout the state or even somewhere on the other side of the world. We thank you for this wonderful gift in which we can worship you wherever we may be. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and minds to the wonderful truth that you are still speaking to us. You are guiding us through your word and placing people into our lives and opportunities in in our lives where we can witness to you and to serve our neighbor. So, Lord, we ask that today you would guide us in asking the question, where is God leading me? We begin our service today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, or you are my portion, you are my hiding place, oh, I believe you are the way, the truth the life I believe you are the way the truth the life I believe through every blessing through every promise through every breath I take I believe that you are provider You are protector, you are the one I love, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are It's a new horizon And I'm set on you And you meet me here today With mercies that are new All my fears 
fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when i'm here with you it's a new horizon and i'm set on you and you meet me here today with mercies that are new all my fears and doubts they can all come to because they can't stay long when i believe you are the way the truth the life i believe you are the way the truth the life i believe you are it's a new horizon I'm set on you, and you meet me here today with mercies that are new. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long when I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. Standing before the Lord, we proclaim his goodness and what he has done for us. And one of the ways we do that is by using creeds. Uh, one of the creeds is the Apostles' Creed. It's been used for hundreds upon hundreds of years in the church. Uh, dates back to the earliest kind of versions of it go all the way back to about the year 200. Um, and so we've been using it ever since to proclaim our faith in the triune God. And so let us use our voices and lift them up together in proclaiming what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our readings. And our readings are, we start with our gospel lesson, which is from Luke 5, starting at the first verse. And in both the kind of uh, incidents or examples that Matthew or Luke, sorry, Matthew gives us today. Um, he's talking about asking the question, "Where is God leading me?" Peter is asked, "Follow me." He's asked to basically leave the the the, the fish and the the nets and everything he was doing behind, and he does the same thing for Matthew. So, makes us ask the question, "Where is God leading me?" Our first text is from Luke 5, starting at the first verse. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats, left there by fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. When he sat down and talked to the people from the boat, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and, and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. 
for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And were and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled up their boats upon the shore, left everything, and followed him. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at the tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And our second reading today is from 2 Timothy uh, 3, and it talks about Scripture, and it talks about how uh, Scripture can be used, and that it is God's Word given to us to guide our lives. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you have learned it, and who from infancy you have known the Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, for that the, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I ask Andy to come on forward for our children's message. I'm leaving on a jet plane, I don't know. Hey, boys and girls, how are you today? You know what? I need a vacation. How about you? Do you need one? Take five seconds right now and tell your mom or dad where you would like to go on a vacation. What's your ultimate vacation spot? Say it right now to your parents. I know, some of those answers probably were Disney, Hawaii, Australia, Iowa, wherever it might be, that's where you want to go. Well, I want to go on a vacation, and you know what? I don't know what to do. I think I need to go see a travel agent so that they can lay out my schedule, give me all the details, and that will be perfect. Well, as I was listening to those readings today and thinking about a children's message, well, a vacation came to my mind. Because think about what Jesus was doing to those disciples. Levi was already working and Jesus says, Hey, tax collector, stop what you're doing and follow me. Simon, Peter, James, and John, well, they were fishermen. And Jesus comes up to him and says, Stop fishing, come and follow me. Well, boys and girls, as we think about these texts today that we find in Scripture and what this measure is all about of exploring willingly, you and I and your parents, well, we need to be ready to be the hands and feet of Christ wherever he sends us. And we don't know when that's going to be. But someday he's going to say, you know what? Follow me. Let's go. And we need to be ready to do that, just like those disciples were. So as you go about your day, as you're in school, as you're on your sports teams or wherever you're at right now, Be thinking about ways that God is going to use you each and every day because God is going to lead you to awesome places so that he can use you to be the hands and feet. Have a great day planning your vacation. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Iowa? Really? (laughs) 
got an interesting view of vacation. But either way, we continue our service today with our offering. And in our offering, we take what God has given us, that has showered us with, the things that he has given us, even though we don't deserve it, and we give back to him. And we give it back saying, as one, as a, as a thanks to what he's given us, but also as a way that he can use us to provide for others. Sometimes it's to provide for others financially, but sometimes it's also to provide for others in sharing the gospel with them. And so right now we take our gifts and we lift them up to the Lord. You can do that either through bringing it into worship and putting it in the offering plate, or you can send it in uh, to the, you know, to the building, or you can even do it online, either on Realm or on our website. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing Your song again, whatever may Grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Text for today is going to be from our Luke text, and it's going to be from Luke 5. Uh, and we're going to focus in specifically on the verses 27 through 31. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. There's an old story, and you've maybe heard it before. It's got all sorts of different iterations to it, but it tells of a, a Christian man in kind of modern times, and he is praying to the Lord, and he says, Lord, please, if you want me to witness to someone, give me a sign. So he just says, if you want me to witness, give me a sign. 
So later on that day, he's on a bus, and he's taking this bus. And to be honest, this bus is practically empty. It's basically just him, the driver, and maybe one other person on there. And he's driving along, minding his own business, and the bus pulls over to one of the stops. And the stop happens, and a guy gets on, and he is huge, just a big, burly guy. And he looks mean, and he looks like trouble. So this guy gets on the bus, and the bus starts going, and he's walking back, and he's going past all these empty seats. He finally comes up to the same seat as the the Christian gentleman and basically just throws himself down right next to him. And he's just so huge, so he takes up not only his own seat, but half of the the gentleman's seat as well. And the guy doesn't say anything, because he's like, oh, this guy's huge, he could beat me up. And so he just kind of pulls himself into a little ball and kind of leans up against the window. This goes on like this for a little while in silence. And finally, the big, burly gentleman just (sighs) sighs and says to basically nobody in particular, just kind of speaking to himself, my wife has left me. I've lost my job. My kids hate me. I might as well just end it. And our Christian gentleman hears him say that, and he just kind of keeps to himself because, well, the gentleman didn't say that to him or ask him anything, so he just minds his own business. A few minutes pass, and there's another just huge (sighs) sigh. And he says again, what can I do? Where can I get help? Where can I find somebody who will listen to me? Where can I find somebody that's going to forgive me? Where can I find somebody that's going to give me some hope? Once again, the Christian gentleman just kind of keeps to himself and you know because he's not asking him these things. About two blocks later, the big bruiser just finally actually just looks to the gentleman and says, Who can save me? This Christian gentleman screwed up his courage and you know folded his hands and bowed his head and said, Lord, where are you leading me? If I'm supposed to witness to this man, please give me a sign. Other than hitting him over the head with a sledgehammer, I'm not sure what else God could do. The question, where is God leading me, is our measure question for today, for us as a congregation, but also for us as individuals. A few moments ago, I read the story of Levi. Now, you probably know him better as Matthew. And you've probably heard it before, but you may... Well, you may not have ever wondered what was going through Levi's head on that day. I mean, Jesus was just starting his ministry. He didn't have a huge entourage of people following him everywhere he went. And I mean, he was had crowds, but nothing like he'd have later. And as far as miracles go, he's done a few, but the majority of them are still to come. And Jesus just stops by this Capernaum tax collector's table and says, follow me. You got to wonder, what did Matthew think? What did Matthew think he was supposed to do? Because Jesus gives him no reason why Matthew should follow him. Besides, Matthew had a pretty good paying job. I mean, true, um, he was hated because of his job, as we said a couple weeks ago, but He could have saved up enough money, just kept on stockpiling it, getting a nice nest egg, and retired early and moved to some place where nobody had the foggiest clue what his old profession was. Follow Jesus? What about his contract to to work the table? What about the fact that his boss is going to be not too happy that he's not going to give his two weeks notice? What's he supposed to do? Now, I don't know what Matthew thought. The text doesn't say. The text doesn't say a whole lot. But I can tell you what he did. He got up and followed. Matthew followed Jesus throughout Jesus' whole life. Followed him to a cross. And was there at the empty tomb where Jesus rose. He wrote the book of Matthew is inspired by the Holy Spirit to tell that story, that account of Jesus' life. And that book, along with the rest of Scripture, has changed lives and has changed this world. Matthew asked the question, 
where is God leading me? And it led him in miraculous and amazing places, and God used him in spectacular ways. But the question we can kind of ask is, is there other people in Scripture that this has happened to as well? And the answer would be, yeah. I mean, Noah. Noah's, I mean, he's probably on his way to Walmart or something. And he's going along, and God suddenly just stops and stops him and says, Noah. Yes? Hey, uh, I want you to uh, kind of get ready. Uh, have you maybe noticed all of the, you know, the, 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 the terrible things of the world, the, the evil and the, just everything that's rising up? Yeah, I kind of have. I mean, it's everywhere. It's kind of hard not to notice it. Good. Fantastic. Because I'm going to send a flood and destroy it all, and we're going to kind of do creation part two. You good with that? Um... Uh, yeah, and I want you to build a boat, gigantic boat. Well, how big of a boat? Really big boat, gigantic boat. Because I want you to take two of every kind of animal in the world onto it. Okay? Um, sure. You got a problem with that? No, we're good. <laughs> Imagine. What, did, what went through his mind? What was he thinking? You know, did he think about the relatives that weren't going to make it? Did he consider the cost of union labor and building a boat that big? Well, I can't tell you what Noah thought, but I can tell you what he did. And Noah built a boat, and you and I are here now because he asked the question, where is God leading me? Others have asked that exact same question. One day a shepherd by the name of Moses, you may have heard of him before, is out wandering with his sheep. And I mean, it's not the most luxurious job. It's not really a high profile job, but it was steady work. And he, he was out there in the wilderness and he sees a bush burning in the distance. He goes over to investigate, goes checks it out. And suddenly God is speaking to him through that burning bush. And he tells Moses, guess what? You're my man. He's like, I want you to go to Egypt and take my people out of slavery. Moses goes, uh, me? God says, yeah, you. And, you know, Moses is just kind of flabbergasted, and, but he's ready for God in this because he's got all of his excuses lined up. He's basically like, well, first off, Lord, me no speak so good. And two, they're not going to listen to me. I'm a shepherd. And number two, three, um, I don't even know who to tell them has sent me. And just as Moses was ready with his excuses, God was just as ready with his answers and says, uh, number one, Aaron's going to speak for you. You're good. Number two, yes, they are going to listen to you. And number three, you're going to tell them that Yahweh, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, is sending you. Yep. And Moses, he went where the Lord was leading. And you know the rest of the story. Hope you see a pattern here. It, it's a pattern that's repeated throughout God's history and throughout Scripture. It was repeated by a German monk even after Scripture stops recording what is happening. And the German monk in Germany says, Here I stand. I can do no other. It was our ancestors who immigrated to this country in search of religious freedom. Asking, where is God leading me? And following that lead. It was repeated by folks who put up this building and this facility, saying, where is God leading us? And how can we, you know, as this city expands, reach out and share God's word with those that are moving into our area? They all asked, where is God leading me? And then they did what the Lord asked. So what all these Bible stories have to do with us? Well, simply, the days of the Lord asking his people to do things for him out of gratitude for what he has done didn't end with the last chapter of Revelation. I know. 
Uh, I've, had, I've experienced it in my own life. And my first church, it was a mission church. And we were, to be honest, at the end of our rope uh, financially. We were $72,000 behind on our mortgage. And we were trying to figure out any way to keep that school and church open. And we knew we were going to have to face some very tough decisions. And so we asked the question, where is God leading us? What is he telling us to do? And we looked at Scripture, and Scripture was clear. He said, you have not because you have asked not. So we asked. And I'd love to say that we asked just in complete and total faith without any worry. But I'll be honest, we were afraid. But God was not. The next week, we had scheduled a meeting to have uh, the council together to decide who we were going to have to let go or how many people we were going to have to let go to be able to make it. And that morning, I got a phone call from Reverend Al Shade at the congregation down the street. It was actually our parent congregation. And he said, hey, Kurt, um, uh, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have called you months ago, but I just completely forgot about it. Um, one of our members passed away, and she lovingly left her home to the church. And we, we just we sold that uh, home a few months ago, and um, we decided we were going to split it with you and, uh, and a couple other places. I said, fantastic, that's awesome. I said, how much? He said, uh, hold on a minute, let me look. Uh, like I said, this was weeks ago, i got to check it, uh, looks it up. And he goes... 72,125. <laughs> People say God doesn't have a sense of humor. A few years after that, it was the, the Great Depre the, the Depression, the, the, the Great Recession. And it was about 2009 or so, and people were losing their jobs left and right. And um, people were taking their kids out of our school because they were worried that they were going to lose their job and then they wouldn't be able to afford the tuition and so on. And we watched as kid after kid was leaving and kids of which that we were sharing the gospel with every day. So we sat down and asked, where is God leading us? And the council met and we decided to, to take a look at Scripture. And one of the things that we looked in the Scripture is where the Lord says, suffer the little children to come after me. So we followed the board put out a statement saying that if any parent that is going to our school loses, or their kids are going to our school, loses their job, their kid will continue at our school tuition free. And if they have multiple kids at our school, all of their kids will continue at our school tuition free. Local news got hold of it and started telling people about it. And not only did we stop losing kids, we actually picked some up. Lord was doing cool and amazing things. The question we asked then was, where is God leading us? That's a, it's a great question. Because after the fall into sin, the Lord said, I'm going to send my son to save this world. This world that is so messed up. This, sin, this world that is so full of pain and suffering. And when the fullness of time had come, Jesus came and did just that. He spent his life being rejected and despised, but he spent his life also living his life perfectly in our place, doing everything right that we do wrong. He carried our sins, and he died our death. And three days later, he rose from the dead and showed the world that through faith in him, our sins are forgiven and eternal life is ours. After he had proven the reality of his physical resurrection to his disciples and a great many other people, he ascended into heaven. But before he did that, he asked his people to do some things in response to his love. No, he didn't say build an ark. And no, he did not say go set his people free. He didn't even tell people to leave their jobs. He said things like go, preach, teach, and baptize all nations, all people of every color, every, every place on this earth. There is nobody that is shunned from my love and my care and my salvation. He said things like, take eat, take drink. This is my body, this is my blood given and shed for you. He said things like, give. 
as it has been given to you. He said, don't neglect the assembling together as brothers and sisters in me. He said, protect the poor and give to them. He said, watch over and protect the oppressed. Words that may not have flowed from a burning bush, but through God's word has still been spoken to you and me. And that's where our first measure of our vision speaks to us. Where is God leading me? And I know we've asked that as a question to us as a congregation. As a congregation, we've started asking because we said we in March we had to go online like we're doing right now. We had to do this so that people could still hear the word because we were being asked to not meet because of this terrible pandemic. But what was interesting is how far that message has gone, and we were just utterly amazed at what was going on. We suddenly, when we opened up, had people that started coming to our worship services that we never saw before. We're like, who are these people? But they discovered us online. People who would have probably never driven down Highview Avenue if it hadn't been for being online. And when we look at where people are coming from, we see people that are watching in Iowa and in Missouri and in Florida and Arizona and everywhere. We've seen what God is doing and we've heard his word saying that we are to go out and preach and teach to all nations. And so when we ask, what, where is God leading We've decided to start looking into what kind of camera system we can get here and what kind of video system we can, can use so that we can proclaim this news even better because this was, looks where God is leading us. And that's also where we ask about where God is leading us as individuals. This question is not just for a congregation. I want to encourage you to ask that same measured question of yourself. Where is God leading me? As God's baptized child, God has a plan for you. It's not just God has a plan for his church or God has a plan for people in general. God has a plan for you. As God's baptized child, you are his hands and his feet to this world. He has placed people into your life and he has called you to be his messenger to them. The relative who's in need the friend with a problem, the stranger on a bus that doesn't know about Christ's love for him. There are ties that you and only you, you alone, are the person to whom God is speaking and using to accomplish his purposes. Now, I don't know what the result of those actions are going to be. I mean, as I went through this, I, neither Moses nor uh, Noah or even Matthew had the foggiest clue where God was going to take them and what he was going to do through them. The only thing they knew is that they should follow. And the Lord has work for you too. What that work is, I don't know. But I want to encourage you to ask the question, where is God leading me? Because it's time for us as individuals, as families, and as a congregation to follow him and do as he asks. May we all do so. Amen. We continue our service by confessing our sins to God our Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, today we ask the question, where is God leading me? Where is the triune God directing me as his child? And all too often, Lord, when we look in at our lives and we ask that question, we have to see that we haven't asked where you're leading me. We've asked, where is our career leading us? Where is my desires leading me? Where is the money leading me? Or whatever else we can think of is leading me. For all those times, Lord, times that we haven't looked to where you were leading us, but where others or other things were leading us, we ask your forgiveness. But Lord, we also ask that you would forgive us for all the other things we have done wrong, for all the times we have not loved you with our heart, soul, and mind, and all the times we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. 
We lift up all these sins before you, knowing that you forgive us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We lift up these and all other sins before you now in silent personal confession. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. That is why as a call and ordained servant in the word I announce the grace of God unto all of you and in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior I proclaim that you are forgiven in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. Being God's forgiven children, we are called upon to pray to him. He says, bring your thoughts, your concerns, your everything to me. I will listen and I will answer. So let us do so. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fact that you have given us your word and so many examples in that word of um, people who have asked the question that where you were leading them, and shown what you do through your people. We ask, Lord, that we would ask those questions too. That we might not see you in a burning bush, or you might not come to us through angels or other ways, but you have given us your word in which you have told us so much, and you have promised that you will speak to us through it. 
So Lord, we ask that you would guide us, that you would help us ask that question of where you were leading us, and that we would listen. And then, just like Matthew, we would follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up our mission focus. We thank you, Lord, for people uh, that are in Link Twin Cities and for those that have heard your call to follow you, that they have left all sorts of jobs, they have left all sorts of backgrounds to follow you and proclaim the good news in places, especially in the Twin Cities and, and in other places that have not heard your love. We ask, Lord, that you would bless Link Twin Cities and that you would support them in all sorts of ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for our election. Lord, as we're getting more and more mail in our mailbox, and no matter where we turn, we see news saying that the opponent is evil and, and working for Satan and whatever else. Lord, we ask that you will work through your Holy Spirit, that you will bring truth to our nation, and that through your working, the person that you have chosen will be elected. We ask that that person would be a God-fearing individual and that, Lord, they would work your will and listen to your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also pray for our president who is in power now. We pray for President Trump. We also pray for our governor, Governor Walls, and all those that are in power. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them and that you would strengthen them and that you would guide their ways and that you would give them wisdom in this troubled time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray for our nation, which is seeming on the verge of breaking apart at times because of racial racial injustice. Lord, we ask that you would be with our nation, that you would help us to see each other not as a color, not as as a skin tone, but as your people, your creation. We ask, Lord, that all this nation might come together in you and that we would be healed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we also pray that you would protect our police and our emergency personnel and our fire departments. Lord, we thank you for the work that they do, and we ask, Lord, that you would keep them safe as they protect us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. ever satisfy through every trial my soul will sing no turning back I've been set free Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need And this hope will never fail Heaven is our home Through every storm My soul will sing Jesus is here To God be the glory Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me Everything I need is in you, everything I need. We 
we are called to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. We are called to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me, everything I Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.